Hey folks, Joseph Sabari here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's a stop motion and CGI animated feature that's based on the book by Antoine de Saint Exupéry. You know, the French author, which is being released exclusively to Netflix since August 5th of this year, and it's being released in selective theaters nationwide, including the iPic Westwood in Westwood, California. After studio Paramount Pictures had canceled their spring release, in fact this movie was going to give it a 3D release included, as well as 2D, called The Little Prince. A story about a young boy who lives on a planet where he takes care of a beautiful rose and, and explore many adventures as well as seeing all the golden stars around the sky in outer space. And I used to read this book when I was a little kid. Definitely uh, a great story to listen to. And I used to watch the animated series that aired on Nickelodeon, which I owned the complete series on DVD. I still own it today, by the way. Which I bought at Barnes & Noble back in 2006. That was 10 years ago. It was a great release. And I was actually looking forward to this movie ever since uh, Paramount was announcing that they were going to release it in CGI animated form with the mix of stop motion. So I was really looking forward to it, but unfortunately Paramount didn't know what they were doing. I mean, it was actually the most successful film in France after they just released it uh, at the Cannes Film Festival out of competition. It was actually the most successful film of all time, so they thought maybe it would do pretty well for the U.S. And Paramount just didn't know what the hell they were doing. So there you go. But this movie is quite different from what you expect from the story because this time it focuses on two stories. One focuses on a little girl who lives with her mother, you know, preparing for the academy. So, you know, during the whole summer vacation, she spends most of her days, you know, having a life plan and just doing her work and keep it on schedule. Well, suddenly he meets an, an elderly person next door who's a, an aviator, and he's the narrator who tells the story about meeting the little prince. So I thought it was interesting, and I figure I, I'd check it out anyway, because after all, um, I do love the book. And I know that the little prince also had a live action film that came out in 1974, which had. Uh, Gene Wilder in it, and that was a good film too. That was also released by Paramount Pictures. And maybe someday I'll I'll check out the '74 version and see how it goes, because I haven't seen that film in a long time, and I wish I could find that film on DVD. You know, hopefully, if it's still available somewhere, because you know, they're pretty rare. I mean, most of these titles nowadays are, are really hard to find. Let's get to the review. It stars Jeff Bridges, Rachel McAdams, Paul Rudd, Bud Quartz, Marion Cotillard, Benicio Del Toro, James Franco, Ricky Gervais, Paul Giamatti, Riley Osborne, Albert Brooks, and Mackenzie Foy. It's written by Irina Bridgenall and Bob Pulaschetti with Mark Osborne who, who wrote the story and it's also directed by him as well and by the way he's the director who did the first Kung Fu Panda. The movie begins when an overworked mother who is voiced by Richard McAdams had prepared to take her daughter the little girl who is voiced by Mackenzie Foy to enroll inside an academy known as the Worst Academy you know, for little kids 
and moved into a new place, a complex, um, during the summer vacation and imposing her a life plan, which is a day planner uh, for the little girl to actually keep up with her studies, such as you know doing all the mathematics and all this other stuff that she needs to prepare for the academy. Plus, gives her some time to do some exercise, you know, have some breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all of that, you know, before she goes back to sleep. So she spends the whole entire summer vacation doing all this. That is until she gets distracted by an elderly retired aviator who's voiced by Jeff Bridges, who suddenly accidentally tried out his plane which is already falling apart and the propeller had crashes into their house so they had to fix it and, and call the police to find out what's going on so then the very next day the little girl had met the aviator and he tells a story about how he met the little prince that he encounters inside the Sahara Desert the little prince had asked the aviator to draw a sheep, but because of his lacking skill, he decided to, to draw a box instead, which has a sheep inside. So suddenly, that's what he was looking for. So the little girl and the aviator continued to read and play together, you know, without doing all of the, the studying and all this other stuff that her mother asked her to do. So, he, he tells uh, the little girl that the little prince's house lives inside a planet called Asteroid B612, which is covered with what both sprouts, and recounts how the, how the king passed the little princess by traveling to Earth to go to all of his wild adventures, you know, while cleaning away all of the sprouts and he also found a plant which is a rose that's alive and suddenly the rose became his friend so even though she had been rather selfish but then after a while the, the little prince had left this planet with a flock of birds and had eventually landed on earth where he found a red fox. But the fox did bid goodbye to the little prince to advise him to always see with his heart. So with the aviator finishing this story, he gives the stuffed fox as a gift for the little girl. And they thought that because they've been spending more time, because her birthday was coming up, that the aviator advised her to take her to get some free pancakes but unfortunately the aviator got pulled over by a cop because he isn't allowed to leave the house and of course he doesn't have a driver's license so that's another problem so then the mother felt very distressed and decided to send her back to her room for punishment and just continue to do her studying and not to mention, she ripped uh, the story that he wrote and threw it in the trash along with the stuffed fox and just, just let her continue throughout the entire week of studying and doing all this other stuff the way the mother tells her to do. But then when, when she got her story back, it was already ripped to shreds and put, a, put tape together, he was going to go back and meeting the aviator again so he'll give it a second chance. And things um, seems to go pretty well as it sounds, but then after the last part of the story, you know, things were not going so well for the little girl until we begin to find out what happens to the aviator because he's been sent to the hospital for a coma. Already happening on the last day of summer vacation, the little girl decided to prepare to search for the little prince by going inside the aviator's plane along with the stuffed uh, red fox to search everywhere for him 
because he might be, you know, an, an adult. I don't want to give too much away for the film, but I gotta say, in the way this movie is going, it is kind of disappointing that we never get to see the entire animated feature that we really wanted, where it just focused mostly on the little prince alone, you know, trying to find his ways and having to live inside his own home, the asteroid B612, and gets to explore many adventures by flying with a flock of birds everywhere, and gets to meet all the other characters that he bumps into. Just like how you saw it in the animated series uh, back in the 80s. And also in the book as well. And, and yeah, and even some other adventures uh, in the 1974 film. But they want to go for a different approach, so they had to split them into two stories. So this time it's the little girl that gets her chance by actually finding the little prince. You know, after the aviator tells his story, because apparently he wanted to get his chance when it's time, but considering how old he is. Um, it almost felt like they're trying to go for this um, Peter Pan type of story too about, you know, growing up. Like, even for a little kid, you know, even they didn't want to grow up at all. They want to stay young forever. But you know that's not going to happen, because once you grow up, you know, sometimes you either remember or you forget. And that's how it reminds me of, like, the movie Hook, for instance. And, yeah, I, I, I had to go for that, too, because even that film had to focus on one guy who may claim to be Peter Pan, but he's just basically an ordinary dad who's, who's not paying attention to his kids. Not even his wife, either. So he doesn't even remember who he is. So he forgets. And that's the problem, too. Forgetting <laughs> means that you won't be able to remember who you really are. And that's the real important thing of all. But, yeah. Anyway, I love the animation that they chose. It definitely looks stunning. Um, especially with the 2D animation of stop motion, which has a mix of a paper-like uh, animation that they use for creating the, the little prince and the aviator and all of that. I thought it looks spectacular the way they shot this. It works so well that I think this movie could have looked even better in 3D. But sadly, <laughs> we never get a chance because Paramount was too stupid, stupid to not give it a, a wide release in the spring. And I guess I could see why they didn't do that because Batman vs. Superman was coming out. And, and I guess they were worried that this movie was going to flop. So they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, go figure. And, yeah, and I had the feeling that it might be true. Yeah, because also another animated feature that came out in March was Zootopia, which is the most successful film to date for Disney. Yeah, they didn't want to go into competition between all the other animated features that we're getting this year. And boy, we are getting a lot already. But also the CGI animation in the movie was as impressive too. But it's just basically standard. So they have to go for that. But I did enjoy it nevertheless. Um, I didn't mind the, the story of the little girl with the aviator. I think it actually worked in some ways or another, but it just feels like that's just what they're going to go for. I mean, the mother is just what she is. You know, she's just trying to control her daughter, trying to be like her. But you know, she doesn't want to be like her at all. Because it just seemed like that's going to be a problem. She doesn't want to grow up. And the aviator, on the other hand, you know, already grown up, even feels the same way, but nevertheless, he always will be remembered, and he always will remember the little prince no matter what, until the day he dies. So that's the, the whole point of the story. I also love the score that they chose by uh, Hans Zimmer, along with Richard Harvey. 
definitely a wonderful score right there. And um, it had the spirit to it. I, I really enjoyed it. The voice acting in this movie it has a great cast right there. I mean, you got Jeff Bridges, Rachel McAdams, uh, uh, along with all the other actors like Paul Rudd, Bud Port, uh, Marion Cotillard, uh, Benicio Del Toro, uh, even James Franco, Ricky Gervais. I mean, that's a big cast right there. I mean, hard to believe. But it's um, but it's something that uh, we've, we've been experiencing for a very long time, and I've been looking forward to something like this ever since they announced this, because after all, th this is uh, one of my favorite books uh, for its time, and, and I'm just glad that we finally got one. But anyway, um, check this movie out on Netflix if you get a chance, because trust me, it's a very fun experience uh, to see. I mean, with all the animated films we're getting nowadays, I mean, this is definitely the one to check out. So, I highly recommend it. So anyway, I give The Little Prince five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.